Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video here on the Glastonbury Gabriel YouTube channel. Some of you may know, I suspect a lot of you don't know, Glastonbury has a town deal. What is a town deal I hear you ask? Well, I'm here today at St John's Church to find out just what Glastonbury Town Deal is, how it affects you, do you want to get involved? Let's go and have a look. So, here I am in the august surroundings of St John the Baptist Church here in Glastonbury. And as you can see all around me are the set tables set up and each one of these is one of the organisations involved in the town deal. So I suppose first of all, the thing we need to find out is what is the town deal? So ladies and gentlemen, here I am, and I apologise for the noise. We were going to go outside for some peace and quiet, but the Harry Christian has kicked off at that very moment. So we're back inside the church. So I apologise for the sound. I'm here with Mike White from Glastonbury Town Council. Now, Mike White is kind of the, the link between the town plan and the town council. So I thought, what better person to ask, what is the town plan? What is Glastonbury Town Plan? Why is everybody here today? And why is it of interest to people watching this video? Mike, how are you doing? Nice to Thanks. see you. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me. Um, okay, so the town deal, there, there's something called Glastonbury Investment Plan. It's uh, 23.6 million uh, pounds, and it is essentially for infrastructure of different things. So like the Baileys building, the Life Factory is going to be at um, Red Brick Building. Um, St Dunstan's House, which is beside the Town Hall. So that's a community health and wellbeing centre. So the, we have 11 projects inside the Town Deal. So we'll, we'll call it Town Deal for short. 11 projects, and they're all slightly different. Some of them are very different. Now, unlike other um, uh, town investment plans, there's 100 or 101 altogether. We are the only one with grassroots input. So if you go to, say, Bridgewater Town Deal, it would be central government dealing with Bridgewater Council. We are 11 projects, all trying to bring this absolutely unique thing together. Now, timing, all 11 projects have to be completed and functional by the 31st of March, 2026. That is not very far away. There are 10 of the 11 projects laid out here. And so you can go and find out where they are basically at the moment. So the, the updates, things they've already done, problems they might have encountered. Um, so we've actually come a long way since last year. You know, and so the other really important thing, which is beautiful, is the projects are starting to work together. Before we had this silo effect, none of the projects or few of the projects were talking to each other. So now we're saying, OK, instead of duplicating effort, how can we sort of share resources? If somebody else is doing that, can we use their information and sort of adjust it to ours? So that's pretty much where we're at at the moment. And so I think it is actually very exciting. There's some brilliant updates. Um, that have come and so yeah and our brief now is to sort of move to the delivery phase from the previous um planning phase okay so that, that's fantastic well that's really interesting so we at some point today we're going to meet lynn sedgemore who's the chair kind of i guess the the, the yeah. head honcho yeah. around here for some more details but in the meantime what we're also going to do is you're going to go around and like mike suggested meet all of the groups 
Because they've had a share of 23 million? Yeah, 23.6 million. And you think how small Glastonbury is, 9,000 9, residents or whatever, that is an awful lot of money. Did they all get the same amount? No. no. Okay, so it depends. Okay, okay. Well, well, we'll probably find out more about that as we go around. But everybody has got a large chunk of money to enable them to do what they want to do. And we're going to go and see some of these projects. And believe you me, there's some fascinating stuff going on here. But for now, for me and Mike... Thank you. Over there. May Glastonbury flourish. May Glastonbury flourish. Well, here we are with our vicar, Mr. David McGill. How are you, oh, I'm very good. I haven't seen you for ages, Kate. No, I haven't seen you much either. And it's uh, we were just sitting and having a chat just now. Yeah. So um, this video is all about explaining to people what the town deal is. What yeah. can you tell us? Well, what I can tell you first of all is that it's brilliant it's here at St. John's. Mm. And why it's brilliant is because we got a load of money about three or four years ago just to ensure that we can make sure that the community actually came in and out. Mm. So the regeneration project is £20 million. Can you believe that? £20 million. Mm. And there are 11 projects going on. And so they've all come together this morning so that people can come and ask questions, perhaps add to the project, perhaps say, why are you doing this? When is it going to happen, etc. And it's really for the town to come together and see what these projects are all about. It's mm. great. It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're all lined up in there. Is it 12, is there a dozen? Maybe a dozen now, yes. I there were 11. There were 11, now there's a dozen. Very biblical. <laughs> well, we're not going to go there. But I, but I do like fish. I have to say I do like fish. <laughs> well, that's all right. <laughs> so we're going to go in in a minute and we're going to meet all these people. Yeah. But just as a quickie, we were, we, were, we were talking about, we're going to be doing a day in the life video of you soon. Oh, Ladies yes. and gentlemen, if you ever wanted to know what a busy vicar in a town like Glastonbury <laughs> gets up to, stay on the channel because we're going to we're going to follow this guy around, you know, fly on the wall stuff. I anyway, it's something they'll all enjoy. I'm Gabriel. sure it will be. Anyway, thank you for It'll taking the time. You, you thank you. Care. Well, there you go. That was David the, at the, uh, the vicar. I'm going to go back inside now and we'll meet a few of the, uh, the people. Well, ladies and gentlemen, look at this. It's Mr. Ian Tucker. Now, Mr. Ian Tucker and I go back quite a few years when this lovely man here supported my plan to do a virtual tour of the whole of Glastonbury, which we did. We got it working. But anyway, for now, I've come to talk to you about the Bailey buildings because you're involved in one of the projects that have won town project money. And I was wondering if you could just explain to people what exciting things that are going to happen to this rather wonderful building that you're in charge of down there. Well, this is a building that over the years, over the century or more, has employed people from Glastonbury, skilled people from Glastonbury, creating really good product. And unfortunately, with the demise of the sheepskin trade, it went into decline and in the 80s it closed altogether. So we've now got these redundant commercial buildings, which have, are listed, are quite exciting in shape and, and stature. And we've now secured £6.7 million from the town deal to actually renovate them. It's challenging times because obviously all the prices are going up with inflation. But the challenge for us now is to bring these buildings back to life so that they provide workspace for the next generations of Glastonians. Fantastic. I mean, I believe I'm right when I say that Mr. Henry Cooper wore a pair of boxing gloves made in this very building when he fought Mr. Cassius Clay, who was also wearing a pair of boxing gloves made in this very building. I'm correcting you. Absolutely that. right. Bailey's, boy, Bailey's boxing gloves were renowned throughout the world. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. But as were tennis rackets and, and all the other gear for cricket, mm. um, all your pads they used to make. Of course, they also use to make sheepskin coats and um, all sorts of other tannery products. And so this wonderful building is going to come back to life and be used again, which I think is absolutely brilliant. We will come, we will do some videos, and the ladies and gentlemen, we're going to show this building as it comes back from as it is now to what it's going to be. And it's going to be an exciting project. So, Ian, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us, and we'll be seeing more of you. Thank you. Good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, and here we are with the Life Factory, and I'm with Rob. Now, Rob is going to tell us a little bit about what's going on, because this is a particularly exciting project, and it involves buildings, so there's something you can see. So, Rob, tell us all about it. Yeah, well, I think you just asked me the question, what is the town's fund? What's it about, and what's happening in Glastonbury? Yeah. Uh, and, and for me, beyond developing buildings or uh, creating farms or all those different things, I, I think we're learning how to work together. Absolutely. I think that's right at the centre of it. That's the hardest thing. How do we do that? How do we have the difficult conversations? How do we get people together? That's why I'm here. That's what I think this is, this is all about. 
Glastonbury is on the town fund list because of what the government called the indices of multiple rural deprivation. What does that mean? They're saying that there's folk within our community that are growing up with uh, potentially not much money or low aspiration or a distrust in the current setup as it stands at the moment. If there's folk in this town that have less than others, what underlies that is a cultural lack, which isn't specific to those particular people. So we all get to learn something through this process. So the actual building itself is what's known as Red Brick C, isn't it? Uh, Red, Red Brick Building C, yes. that's the old uh, Moorlands name for it. Yeah. Right, so this is next door to the Red Brick Building, as locals would know it. Yeah. And what will you be doing in there that's different to Red Brick C? Uh, I'd say three main headings. Uh, the first one is a community canteen. So with, with the community farm, people are learning how to work well on the land, but also learning how to grow food. Um, the community canteen is going to be about teaching folk how to cook food. But, but, yeah, we're going to have a really great commercial kitchen and a teaching kitchen. Um, next up, maker spaces. So uh, people coming in, learning old artisan skills. So that will be uh, ceramics, textiles, wool, uh, woodworking, other artisan skills. Some of which were traditionally in this area anyway. Exactly. Um, we're also doing modern skills as well. There'll be a, a radio studio, a music studio, uh, and modern media as well. That's fantastic. Well, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, from what we've just been told, there is a load of stuff going on here, and I'm sure you're as interested in what's going to develop here as I am. So we will be going back to see this, and, I, and my ears pricked up when he started talking about film and audio and, and media. Obviously, I'm interested there, but it's, it's a lot to take in, so we will go back down. With, now, I would refer you, I'll put a link to the video we did when we were shown around Red Brick Sea as it was being rebuilt. But next time we go down, it will be with a view to look at how it fits into the plan. So thank you for taking the time to talk to us and we look forward to seeing it develop. Thank you. So we're back again with the lovely Bon. Hello, Bon. Hello. Now, Bon is one of the only projects that have won the money that we've actually seen already and we did a video a week ago i think yeah a week we couple of weeks ago that planting that was going on yep now as yep. you explain then uh, bon has, has has now involved in and i'm going to pick this up and read it because it's a long title the glastonbury regenerative food and farming center or you may know it as Rise's Farm. Thank you. <laughs> now, this is an amazing thing. We've got 20 acres down mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. The plans, well, I'm going to shut up in a minute and let Bond talk, mm -hmm. but it's exciting and we're going to be going back and seeing some more. We're going down to talk to the tree lady on Tuesday. So there'll yes. be another episode coming from there soon. But for now, Bon, talk to us about the town deal, mm -hmm. how it's funded the farm and mm -hmm. what you're going to do. Okay, so yeah, two years in the process, the town deal. Um, we put in a bid for, for the farm, I think about a week before the, the deadline. Yeah, yeah. no <laughs> and, pressure. Um, yeah, we got it. And um, it's been two years of, you know, quite a lot of paperwork and working with people on a personal level that I've never sort of, you know, institutions that I've never worked with before. So it's been a really good learning curve and yeah, pleasantly, um, surprisingly a really positive experience even though hard work so I'm really glad that that part is coming to an end mm -hmm. and that we're on the land yes yeah. you know, we will be fully on the land from April the 13th when we will have the office unit the welfare unit the volunteer space that's less than a month toilets I know <laughs> and then we're hoping to have a May Day or maybe the day after May Day, because there's a lot that goes on in town anyway. Mm. Um, kind of, yeah, open day there. So that people can come down, get to know what's going on, sign up for things, yeah. Fantastic. And there's going to be education from grassroots to qualifications. There's going to be therapeutic horticulture going on. There's going to be growing. There's going to be fun. Um, <laughs> loads of planting, natural building, more fun, 
Um, <laughs> Farm's a key ingredient here, it's isn't it? It's a big it? one. So, <laughs> volunteers, can people come down and volunteer? People can come down and volunteer. The best way to get in contact with us is community at bridiesfarm.org.uk. Get your name onto a mailing list. We will send, we will email everybody when we've got the facilities for lots of people to come, like toilets, hand washing, you know, yeah, yeah, ones yeah, yeah. that people really need. Um, and yeah, we will send out events and dates of things happening, but that's the best way to keep in contact. But like I said, from the 13th of April, we will be down there anyway, so yeah. Just pop turn in. up. And pop in and say hello, knock yeah, on well, the office door. And look for another yeah. channel video coming soon when we go back mm. down to talk about trees at the farm, because it's an important part of what you're doing is it's planting the tree. Part. Yeah. yeah, four acres of forest garden. That's that's quite a commitment. Yeah. That's a lot of trees as it well, is. isn't it? Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Well, there's going to be more exciting news to come from here. But for now, Bon, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Yeah, no and I, I hope you tell lots more people today. And it's, mm. uh, it's a really successful day for you. It has. It's been a good day. And thank Excellent. you. Thank you. As always. Brilliant. Mm. Thank you. So, I'm here now with the lovely Lynn Sedgemore. Now, Lynn's the boss. What is your, your actual role is what? I'm chair of the Town Deal Board. OK, so it doesn't get much higher than the chair. So I thought I would come out, get Lynn to just give us a skipping stone across exactly what it is we're here for today, what the Town Deal is, how big a deal it is, and how you can get involved. OK, fantastic. Here I go. So we are one of the towns that received nearly 25 million because we've already had 500,000 that we spent on accelerator projects and we've now got 23.6 million to spend on 11 projects and they all have to be completed by March 2026 and what we've tried to do is choose projects that touch every part of the town. So it's from Regenerative Farm, it's restoring the Baileys building, it's restoring uh, St Dunstan's house, it's a um, clean energy project. It's edu we've got a, a project with the Open University. We're going to improve pathways, um, the sports and leisure project. I'm trying to remember all these off the top of my head. Um, You're doing well. So, um, and then there's the Abbey project. There is St. Bride's Mound. Um, I, and then there's the site um, for the off-grid dwellers that we are going to develop as well. I think that's, oh, and the business and enterprise hub. Um, so the idea is that this 25 million nearly is a huge investment that enables community groups to work in and, and hold the buildings, more jobs, more employment, apprenticeships, learning and skills, development. We're going to have a whole open university website for every Glastonbury resident that they can access and get digital badged learning from the open university. We're working with Strode College to do a whole load of access points. So in a very short summary, there is something for everybody in the town and hopefully you'll have enhanced benefits of community space you may be able to have different jobs employment more learning and skills suppliers will be able to get contracts to build because there's going to be a lot of construction happening in the town and clean energy and a better environment and more tourists absolutely blimey well, that says it all, and that's fantastic. So the question people are going to ask now yeah. is the money's in place, it's been granted. When the bricks start getting put on the ground, when can we start seeing things happening? Because that's yeah. when it starts to get really, really yeah. exciting. Yeah, because uh, today and the open day and the previous open days, it's mostly seen architects' plans and things. Yes. We're hoping that, well, two of the projects have got planning permission, so we're hoping some things will begin to happen from uh, next summer and you can literally start to walk around the town. Um, some are still waiting for planning permission. We do have an issue, we have to have bat surveys uh, in some of the older buildings because they're heritage buildings. So we will keep everybody informed. This is the third um, open day we've done. We do lots of press releases, lots of interviews on the radio, in the newspapers. So keep an eye out and go on to our website, um, glastonburytowndeal.co.uk. Um, um, yeah, so basically we keep everything updated on there. Fantastic. 
fantastic. Yeah. It's really exciting. It is. I know. Well, thank you, Lynn. And I'm sure we will, over the course of time, we're going to be talking to Lynn again because what I plan to do is after today, I will be following these projects because I'm sure you'd like to see how they develop. I know I would. Yeah. And so we'll be coming back again more and more now to see what, what's going on here. But for now, from Lynn, thank you for that eloquent description of what's going on i think i understand it a bit now as well <laughs> yeah and, and i need to say a big thank you because a lot of people are doing this work voluntarily you know you know some people it's their paid job but they're doing this on top of so the amount of energy commitment goodwill that we are seeing in place i can't thank the project people the board members uh, it's just fantastic and we want this to make Vastbury a better place, honestly. That's what it's about. We love it. We're all doing this because we love the town. It's an amazing place. Absolutely. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm now sat with Janet Bell from the Abbey in Glastonbury, probably our most famous um, landmark, um, if not in town, in the country. It's world famous, in fact. They have been one of the town deal winners in this particular uh, occasion, and they are going to do something so exciting for visitors to the, Gla to the Abbey. I'm now going to shut up and let Janet explain exactly what's going to happen. So we're going to vastly improve the welcome for visitors to the Abbey and create a very attractive public space outside um, the main ticket office and shop buildings. We're going to landscape the main drive, um, open out an area outside the museum, which we're calling the Piazza at the moment, and that's all going to be beautifully landscaped and, and planted. And then we're going to demolish the current ticket office to open up um, site and access to St Patrick's Chapel and Courtyard. Um, so all that will be available to the public to sit in and enjoy. So St Patrick's Chapel will be outside the gate line now? Yes. Oh, that's a nice yeah. touch. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Oh, nice. And then we're going to refurbish the current shop so it becomes a new shop and cafe. Mm -hmm. and you'll be able to sit on the piazza and have a nice lunch or a cup of coffee or hopefully a glass of wine. And um, <laughs> um, we're going to uh, provide new toilets at the back of that building. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the most exciting um, parts change will be all the windows to the refurbished shop and the museum um, will have etching in new windows that reconstructs the medieval chapel, uh, medieval cloister. Um, so you're coming into an area that looks much more like a heritage site, um, but will be a beautiful place to sit and enjoy. Excellent. I've got to ask, this isn't going to be cheap. Now, with the, we've, we're hearing, I'm hearing today from a lot of people that the cost of living, has this, this hike has happened since all this was... So how's that affected your plan? Well, we're just waiting at the moment for costs to come in from builders. Mm. Uh, we're working on the basis of a £1.6 million project at the moment okay. um, and we've, uh, we've got just under a million from the town fund deal so I'm writing a lot of grant applications at the are. moment. I bet you are, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> wearing out your pen, wearing yes. out your pen. Yeah. Well it's absolutely fantastic, I mean it's, I can't wait and of course this is going to be one of the things that people are saying when are we going to see what's happening, when is this going to start happening, this is going to be one of the first projects apart from maybe the farm where they're planting trees where you're actually going to see ground being broken, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it starts in the autumn this year, in September. Mm -hmm. um, we'll carry on over the winter mm -hmm. season and then hopefully we'll be finished and open by May, June 2024. And you will be remaining open throughout this? We'll be remaining open throughout. Uh, obviously this area will be closed um, and we'll be providing alternative entrance and toilets. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I'd like to thank Janet very much. I'm really excited to see this because it's, it's one of our key town offerings when people come to visit and making this as sparkly as it's going to be will have massive benefits to the town and, and draw more, more people in. And I do like the idea of that little chapel. I love sitting in that little chapel, getting it the other side of the gate line so you can just wander up and sit quietly if you need to. That's, that's fantastic. 
and being able to eat and drink down there as well. It's a lovely space down there. It's a very quiet little enclave, isn't it? It's really nice. And it catches the sun. It catches the sun, <laughs> yes. So we'll be going back. Um, we'll be going back. I'll be keeping in touch with Janet for updates, and I'll be keeping you updated. And then w when they start breaking ground, we'll go down and have a look and see what happens. But for now, Janet, thank you so much for explaining everything that's going on. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing all this happen. Thank you. So here we are, and I've moved on to the St Bridges Chapel project. Now this is slightly different. There's not buildings going to be built here, but what's interesting here is there's a partnership, an interesting partnership that is going to be formed, is coming together, which is going to make a really historic site in the area of Glastonbury much more accessible. So over to Simon. Simon, explain what I didn't explain very well there. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, um, yeah, my name's Simon. I work for Somerset Wildlife Trust and we're one of the partners in the Bridget Chapel and Field project. Um, it's actually a really exciting um, partnership. We've got three organisations involved. So we've got two organisations that actually manage land already in the area. We've got Southwest Heritage Trust that own the chapel fields, and then we've got the volunteer group of the Friends of St Bride's Mound that own these big fields here. So it's 33 acres of land. It's a quite a big area. Mm. And what the project's about is about enhancing that and en enhancing access for the public so they can actually see the heritage and learn more about the biodiversity, the wildlife on the site. Um, an accessible track up to the cha chapel. We're going to be laying out the footprint of the chapel. So there's some amazing heritage there that people are going to be able to walk and stand in that location and kind of visualize what the chapel would have been like. Um, and then what we're also going to be doing is enhancing the area for wildlife as well. So working with the friends and working with Southwest Heritage Trust, we're going to do things like maybe more tree planting, creating sort of wetter areas for biodiversity and wildlife, and then having paths, you know, probably, probably um, grass paths, but encouraging people to access the site. It's about, it's about learning about the site, but also about the health and the well-being of the people. So people will come here, appreciate it, you know, absorb the atmosphere. It's, it's a fantastic project. It's also about building links back into Glastonbury to the communities at Glastonbury, but also encouraging people to then go and explore, linking into some of the other projects, the and all, yeah, to the Avalon Marshes, to Bridie's Farm project. It's about connecting to the Avalon Marshes, so it's a really, really exciting project. Fantastic. Well, Simon, thank you very much. We will be coming to see Simon um, and the people down there to see what they're doing, because this is fascinating. And I, I do love Friday's Mound. I've been there myself and we've been there on the film, but there'll be more to come from there really soon. But for now, Simon, thank you very much. No problem, much. that's all right. So I'm here now with Tina from the Robert Richards Initiative, another one of the uh, stakeholders, for want of a better term, in the town deal. Tina's going to explain what the Robert Richards Initiative is and what you're going to see. Over to you, Tina. OK, thank you. So I actually work with Mendip. I'm part of the Glastonbury Town Deal support team. Um, and the Robert Richards Initiative is named after our first chair, who sadly um, passed, passed away. And we wanted to do something in his honor. So the, the Robert Richards Initiative is in three parts. Um, a significant part is what you can see behind me. It's a network of paths around Glastonbury. Um, the, the whole of the Robert Richards um, initiative is about sustainability and the network of paths will connect up with the Glastonbury Way, hopefully get people out of their cars and walking around the town rather than driving. Um, as some, of it, some of it will be multi-user, some of it won't be, but it will be an extensive network that will make a real difference to the town. This, the second part is that we're doing additional sustainability work on three of the buildings in the town deal, on the, ba the Baileys building, the Life Factory, and also the uh, Enterprise and Innovation Centre, and I know you've talked to them separately. And then the third part is um, a really interesting project with the um, Open University, and that will be a, a, a collaboration on a learning website for Glastonbury, and with some activities wrapped around it, it would be a chance to do open university courses, um, the, uh, not the degree level courses, but the open learn courses, almost all of which, all of which actually are free. And we're hoping there'll be more later on, on what you can do after that. And we're also hoping to do some additional work with Strode College, again, based around sustainability. So um, watch the space, really. There's lots of developments happening. It's exciting, isn't mm. it? It's exciting. Yes. yes, well, we will be in touch because, obviously, there's so many things there and you have fingers in other pies. And this, this, one of the stories that's coming out of talking to people today 
is the interconnectivity, what we want disparate organisations are now working together and talking together. And I think despite the money, that's got to be a good thing for the town, hasn't it? Yes, and, and the Robert Richards Initiative is part of the glue that will help oh, hold some together. of that together. Yeah. Um, we're, we are also hoping to contract with the OU to do some evaluation work with us, to do exactly what you just said, to tell the stories of the town deal mm. in a way that might be rep able to be replicated in other towns. But the focus is on sustainability, yes. on, on helping you know, with, with some of the green issues that we know are con concerning to, it, to us all. So more soon. More soon. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I look forward to talking to you again, Tina, but for now, thank you very much. You're welcome. Now, you know Connor as the town clerk. Hello, Connor. Hi, Gabe. Today, you can't see it, but up there is a different hat on. Today, he's wearing his St. <laughs> Dunstan's House Community Health and Wellbeing Centre. Now, yeah. he's going to tell us all about that and what it's going to do for the town. Over to you, Connor. Cheers, Gabe. So, it's a very exciting project. What we're doing is we are renovating the, uh, the derelict part of St. Dunstan's House, and locals will know that more closely as the Glastonbury Information Centre. Yes. We are renovating the uh, portion of that building that has not yet been renovated and is mostly derelict into a community health and wellbeing centre. So the, the vision for this centre will be somewhere that offers a whole range of services and activities for the benefit of the people of Glastonbury's health and wellbeing. So that filters down all the way from commission services, the NHS, healthcare, social care, but also the services and activities provided by the tertiary sector, by charities. So essentially, under the wide umbrella of health and wellbeing, something to benefit every single resident of Glastonbury will happen in St Dunstan's house. Fantastic. And the, the work will begin, when will people start seeing things happening? Yes, yeah, so, well, in terms of things happening, so we have a planning application in at the moment. It has not yet been decided. There's a few last details to clarify. We are hoping to get planning permission in the middle part of this year. And then by the time we go through the detailed design process, which is what I liken to, this is the floor we want, this is the light switch we want, all of those details and satisfying all of the planning conditions that we will no doubt be subject to, we're hoping that construction will probably start. People will be able to start seeing a physical difference in the middle of 2024. And I'm anticipating for the project, the renovation of St. Dunstan's House and the construction of the atrium between St. Dunstan's House and the Town Hall to link the two buildings as one complex, hopefully to be about a 12 month process. So I'm hoping that this project will be open ahead of the 31st of March, 2026 town deal deadline, hopefully in about mid or quarter three, quarter two, quarter three of 2025. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it there with yourself for the first time from Connor. So there's going to be lots of things happening, lots of things to see. And I'll, there are some pictures on the table which you're looking at now. Where you can get a visual idea of what it's going to look like. But we will be coming back. We will be coming back to talk to Connor. Maybe a site visit to see the old buildings as they are now would be really useful. And we'll come along and we'll look at what, where it is now, what we've got now, and then in you know, 12 months time, two years time, there's going to be a whole load of new stuff down there and the town is going to be better for it. So for now, Absolutely. Connor, yep. thank you for your time you and we'll much. see you again soon. You will. So ladies and gentlemen, here's an interesting figure that I've just been given by Connor. The town deal is £23,600,000 and it's been given to a town of just over 9,000 residents. That works out at around 2,600 per head of capita, which is the biggest grant of this scheme anywhere in the country. So Glastonbury has obviously done something right here. So let's move on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here I am with Rob. Now Rob is, as you can see, from the Glastonbury Community Sports and Leisure Hub. Some of you living around here for years will know it's Tor Leisure. Now they were one of the, the benefactors of this scheme and they've got some really interesting plans. And He's going to tell us all about them. So over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Well, we're really excited to be involved in the Town Deal bid. So we've secured £2 million 
to upgrade the building at Tour Leisure to create what we all want Tour Leisure to be, which is a sports and leisure hub. Somewhere where all the community can come down, you can exercise down there, you can grab a beer and watch the sunset in the evening, you can walk your dog down there, you can throw your frisbee around with your family, and you can just have a great time. And we learned some of these lessons during COVID. We, what we learned was that people need that recreational space as well as a sporting space to come and enjoy themselves, relax a little bit, and actually clear your mind of all the pressures of modern day living. So we're going to take that into account as well. But the ability to turn that building into somewhere where everyone in Glastonbury wants to come yeah. is amazing. It's a bit of an eyesore really at the moment, isn't it's, it? It's, not it's a bit of a function. carbuncle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone can deny that no, the no, building no. isn't fit for purpose. No. But actually, the widest picture is we can attract people from outside of Glastonbury into the building because its geographic position in Somerset means that when we hold umpiring and referees courses in the building, Central. everyone is going to come from around the county to come and use Tour Leisure. And that is really exciting for the other towns, businesses and the welfare of, the, of the Glastonbury as well. So there's some really exciting stuff going on. And it's absolutely brilliant. Now talk to me about the footpaths. The footpaths going to be laid down as yeah. well. This is, uh, this is interesting to me because I like to walk around town. So tell us a bit about the footpaths. Well, the footpaths came about, about uh, from some public engagement we did where we were told that people just wanted to come and use the fields for recreational use, just to relax, walk there. It's the but only big green space. There is, it is the only green space and it's 16 acres. But people were finding it difficult on mobility scooters mm -hmm. and the infirm weren't able to walk around the fields. So the plan now is introduce some paths that are easy access, to allow people to walk around with their families and just enjoy the space, use their mobility scooters, come out, see the birds, see the sunshine, feel the sun on their faces and actually get out of their houses. And that is gonna change the whole facility, as I said, it's within walking distance of everyone in Glastonbury and look, let's hope you come and use it. Well, thanks for that, Rob. Well, as with all the other people here, we will be going back to see Rob and the toilet, well, not the toilet, I said the beggy pardon, the Glastonbury Community, I have to read this, the Glastonbury Community Sports and Leisure Hub. They will get a nickname, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the farm over there, it's Bridie's Farm, ignore the long name. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we will be going back because we want to see this develop. I mean, these are, as I said several times today, these are very exciting developments and it's going to impact the town. So we want you to see what's going on out there. But for now, Rob, thank you. Great. Lynn told me that the enabling project is one of the most exciting ones here. So I'm here now with Julie and Jan, who are going to tell us all about the enabling project in less than three minutes. So over to you. So one of the uh, key issues when we were doing all the consultation for the beginning of this process back in 2000 was providing support for people living in non-bricks and mortar accommodation. Really important um, area where we need to focus in Glastonbury. This project is about developing a site for people in Glastonbury where they can live safely and with the accommodation that they need. And so the with dignity the pictures, that they need. Yes, that's indeed. essential. So with access Absolutely. to the relevant services. Brilliant. And that's really what this project is about. We're doing consultation with the communities that currently live in vans and in and around the town. We'll also be doing another event where we focus just on this project. Um, sometime moving forwards, it might be in the town hall, it, it will be in Glastonbury. It might be in the church. It might, it might be in the be church, church, who knows, where we Food's focus on this event um, and talk about um, the whole project in detail, the site location, the proposals and how we're going to take them forwards. That's fantastic. And that, in a nutshell, is, is what it? we're doing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a really important project uh, because there's a lot of people in town who don't live in bricks and mortar. And so uh, an organisation like this fighting the cause is essential. So we will be coming back to talk to these lovely guys again soon and we'll find out how this develops and hopefully see some results. But for now, thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. It's all over. Everybody's packing up. They're all going home. I hope today that we gave you a little bit of information about what the town deal is, how it works, how it's going to affect the town. And don't forget those figures. 2.6 million, no, beg your pardon, 26, 23.6 
And don't forget those figures. 23.6 million pounds has come to this town, which gives us a per capita amount of 2,600, which is higher than any other town deal in the country. So Glastonbury obviously got it right. We will be coming back and meeting everybody again who you've seen today as we go and look at each of the products, projects. But for now, it's Gabriel tripping over his words left, right and centre. It's been a long day. I'm off. Goodbye. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.